Job pricing is the process of placing a dollar value on the worth of a job. In pricing a job, most organizations assign a pay range rather than a specific fixed amount to allow for individual differences in performance. Similar jobs are grouped together into pay grades. Developing the pay grades is part of the individual wage decision. A compa ratio is a number that is calculated by dividing a person's wage rate by the midpoint of the pay range for that grade and multiplying it by 100. This number provides a standardized index for assessing how much people should be paid relative to the job they hold. Compa ratios can be used for budgetary control purposes by not allowing supervisors to make pay increases that exceed a specified compa ratio, such as 10% or 20%. When a wage structure is developed, jobs are grouped into pay grades according to the points associated with them, and a range of pay is assigned to each pay grade. This allows a company to quickly determine what a job should be paid, as well as help determine jobs that may be paid more or less than they should be. These rates are called red circle rates. There are many causes of red circle rates, and it is important for companies to understand what may cause them so that they can look for potential solutions. Some causes may be inflation, minimum wage changes, or internal changes in job redesign. Some administrative problems may arise when the wage structure has to be adjusted due to inflation or internal changes within the organization, such as job redesign. When this happens, adjustments can be made using either fixed rate approach or a percentage increase. The percentage increase is a beneficial method as it allows for a greater increase towards the top of the wage curve, thus reducing the problem of wage compression. The third major decision in designing a compensation system is the individual wage decision. This decision concerns the relative pay for individuals who perform similar jobs in the same company. In other words, why might one person make more than another person and they have the same or similar job? Some of these reasons are performance, experience, seniority, education, and even potential. Changes outside of the organization's control can affect how a company can compensate its workforce. Inflation, interest rates, industry competition, foreign competition, economic growth, and demographic trends are major economic factors that affect compensation. Your compensation structure must remain in line with these outside economic conditions to remain competitive and secure. Compensation practices are influenced by the supply of labor how many individuals are born, how many are actively working or looking for work, and levels of immigration and education all come together to help determine how individuals are paid. When unemployment is high, there is a surplus of labor, and employers can afford to pay less than when unemployment is low, and employers may need to pay higher than usual wages to keep great talent. Understanding what motivates the workforce will allow an organization to compete in a dynamic economy. Some of the major motivation theories that have implications for financial incentives include Maslow's need hierarchy, McClellan's theory of learned needs, Herzberg's hygiene motivation theory, self-determination theory, expectancy theory, equity theory, and goal setting theory. Maslow believes everyone possesses a common set of universal needs, physiological needs, safety and security needs, social needs, ego and esteem needs, and self-actualization needs. According to Maslow, higher level needs cannot be achieved until the needs below have been satisfied. Therefore, each individual is rewarded by different things at different stages of their life. Entry-level employees may be more concerned with financial compensation as they may be working to secure housing and provide food for themselves and their family. As an employee's earning increases, their needs may shift towards being rewarded with difficult tasks and peer recognition for a job well done. 
McClellan examined the need for achievement, affiliation, and power, and how they were acquired, their behavior characteristics, and their effects on society. McClellan concluded that the need for achievement was characterized by personal responsibility, moderate risk, and strong desire for feedback, and was an important characteristic for economic activity and entrepreneurial success. Herzberg's theory relies on the belief that motivator variables contribute to the satisfaction employees feel on the job and that hygiene factors contribute to the dissatisfaction of an employee. Therefore, increasing one's salary will help alleviate one's feeling of dissatisfaction, but will not increase one's feeling of job satisfaction. Only motivator variables such as recognition, achievement, and responsibility will help increase an employee's level of job satisfaction. Self-determination theory looks at the effects of extrinsic rewards, such as money and recognition, on intrinsic satisfaction. The initial thought was that an individual's internal satisfaction would be destroyed by external rewards, as the rewards were seen as a way to control the individual, and the individual may feel a loss of personal control. However, later research suggests that as long as the external rewards are unexpected and not part of a contingent reward system or provide positive feedback on one's performance, then intrinsic satisfaction may remain intact. Now, obviously employees work to receive financial compensation, but companies can use this theory to help with additional bonus systems and supervisor feedback programs. Expectancy theory is as it sounds, if an employee receives what they expect to receive for their work output, then they will be satisfied and motivated to continue. More specifically, employees look at the effort needed to perform to the required standard, the expectancy that they believe that they will be able to complete it, what rewards they will receive for completion or instrumentality, as well as whether or not the reward is valuable to them or not, or valiance. Equity theory is a social comparison theory that focuses on the feelings and perceptions of individuals and whether they think that they are being treated fairly compared to others. Employees will look at their outputs, their work performance, and their inputs, their salary and recognition, and compare it to the outputs and inputs of other employees. Those who think their ratio is unfair experience dissatisfaction and are motivated to change their situation in the direction of greater equity. For example, an employee who believes they make the same as another employee, but that they generally work harder than that employee, may start to decrease their output to be more in line with what they believe the output is for the other employee. The main theory behind goal setting is that individuals perform significantly better when they are attempting to achieve a specific goal. Therefore, organizations should incorporate goal setting in order to motivate employees to do their best. Research indicates that performance is greatest when workers are given specific goals, when the goals are difficult but not unreasonable, when workers accept the goals on their own and feel a sense of ownership in accomplishing them, and when the workers are dedicated to reach the goals they have adopted. Merit pay is the most popular pay for performance method. Here, high performers receive larger merit increases than low performers, so salary increases or bonuses are tied directly to one's productivity. This slide shows a sample chart for annual raises based on the performance rating of a group of employees. 
As mentioned earlier in this unit, the COMPA ratio is a way employers can see where individual employees sit on their wage curve and within their specific pay grades. A merit increase system that is also working to ensure employees stay within their appropriate pay grades is shown on this slide. It utilizes the individual's performance along with their COMPA ratio to reward them while keeping them within their pay grade. High performing individuals towards the top of their pay grade will receive a smaller merit increase than high performing individuals that are towards the bottom of the pay grade. Under a piece rate incentive system, workers are paid a fixed amount for each item produced. Here you see a comparison of straight piecework and Frederick Taylor's differential piece rate plan. Straight piecework plans pay a fixed rate per piece, regardless of how much or how little a worker produced. Under Taylor's differential piece rate, employees are paid one rate if production remains below a predetermined standard and an increased rate if production exceeds the predetermined standard. The standard hour plan is another form of an incentive piece rate plan. A standard number of pieces that should be produced each hour is predetermined. If workers perform the standard amount each hour, they receive the hourly wage. But if they produce above standard, they receive proportionately more money. For example, if a worker produces 1.5 times the standard each hour, they will receive 1.5 times their hourly wage for all hours worked. An incentive plan similar to the standard hour plan is the Halsey Premium Plan. Workers receive a guaranteed hourly wage plus a percentage of the wage for any time saved, generally 33%. The actual production standards are determined by past performance rather than by time and motion studies. For example, if a worker is paid $12 per hour and the task usually requires eight hours, the worker receives an additional $4 per hour for each hour saved under eight hours. Therefore, a worker who completes an eight hour task in seven hours receives a $4 hourly premium. Restriction of output, sometimes called soldiering, gold bricking, or rate restriction, refers to a situation in which a group establishes an arbitrarily low level of performance as a group norm. Individuals within the group police each other's behavior and provide negative sanctions and peer group pressure on individuals who exceed the group standard. Restriction of output often occurs when a vocal minority of low performing group members are able to establish a group norm restricting productivity levels. A skill or knowledge based pay system rewards employees for their ability to perform certain tasks or skills. The first step in creating a skill based pay system is to identify the skills that deserve premium pay. The organization then needs to develop assessment procedures to measure each of the skill levels. Finally, training opportunities that focus on relevant job requirements and company objectives need to be provided to facilitate the learning process. Employees that reach certain skill levels will be assessed and compensated appropriately. In addition to their base pay, employees often receive additional compensation for factors that make work more difficult or unpleasant. The wage differentials are considered an important and essential part of making compensation fair. Shift pay, hazard pay, and callback pay are examples of differential pay. The most common company-wide incentive systems include profit-sharing plans, gain-sharing plans, and stock ownership plans. In addition to paying people according to their individual or group performance, profit sharing by increasing revenue and gain sharing by improving systems are pay based on the performance of the entire organization. An employee stock ownership plan is one in which a trust is created where the company contributes. The proceeds buy stock, which is allocated to individual employee accounts. In essence, these plans are tying company success with employee performance and giving employees ownership in its success and rewards.
In designing a compensation system, companies need to make a strategic decision regarding the best balance between base pay and incentive pay. Employers need to balance the security their employees feel against the necessary motivation required to keep them working hard and succeeding. 